Hi everyone, and welcome to this plant tutorial bite for oxygen not included. As always, make sure to check out the plants tutorial bite if you haven't already for an overview of the plant mechanics. In this plant tutorial bite, we're looking at weaseworts, which have two uses in cooling and radiation. Weaseworts are technically animals, according to the in-game encyclopedia, but they do behave like plants. They are found in frozen biomes, which is very fitting given their use. Digging up a weaseswort gives a wart seed, and its only use is to be planted into a weaseswort. As weaseworts do not reproduce, wart seeds are limited on each map, and the only way to get more is through the printing pod. So into the details, the weaseswort is a utility plant, and does not make a harvestable output. What it does is suck up gas on its bottom tile, and then pump this out on its top tile 5 degrees colder, and I'll go through the numbers for this shortly. The plant itself is two tiles high, and can live in any amount of gas in temperatures between minus 60 and 95 degrees Celsius. It gives a plus 15 decor at a two tile range, and in the spaced out DLC emits a notable amount of radiation, which is one of its key uses there. They can be used wild or domestic, and when domesticated, they consume 4 kilograms per cycle of phosphorite, which means you can run two and a half of these from one Draco. Therefore they are easy to sustain, as Dracos can freely be fed balm lilies, as I explained in their critter tutorial bite. Domestic weaseworts are four times more powerful than wild ones, as they suck up four times as much gas. So a domestic plant will move one kilogram per second, and a wild one 250 grams per second. Similar to aqua tuners, weaseworts remove a fixed temperature of five degrees from the gas. That means the heat removed is proportional to the specific heat capacity of the gas. For a better understanding of specific heat capacity, then see the dedicated tutorial bite. So the higher the specific heat capacity is, the better the weaseworts will work, and therefore hydrogen is the best gas to use for this. In fact, you may have seen designs with weaseworts in hydrogen rooms, and this is why. But as a quick side note, a long time ago, domestic weaseworts didn't used to require any fertilization, so could be planted in closed rooms. If you see any designs like this, Beware that you would need to fertilise the weaseworts now, unless using the pip flower pot planting exploit. Looking at the numbers then, here are the most common gases, and how much cooling a weaseworts can make with each one, both wild and domestic. Note that there are technically other gases that also work with weaseworts, but they are more uncommon, so I've left them out. Hydrogen is clearly the best, as I mentioned and be aware that oxygen and carbon dioxide will only generate about a third as much cooling as using hydrogen, but it depends on the application as to whether that's a problem or not. At best then, a single weaseworts can produce 12 kilo DTUs of cooling. For reference, an anti-entropy thermonullifier makes 80 kilo DTUs of cooling, so the same as almost 7 weaseworts. A thermoregulator also running hydrogen makes 33.6 kilo DTUs of cooling for 240 watts, or the same as almost 3 weaseworts. And a thermo aqua tuner costing 1.2 kilowatts removes 585 kilo DTUs with a water coolant, or 1182 kilo DTUs with supercoolant. That's the same as 49 or 98 weaseworts respectively. With those numbers in mind, weaseworts certainly aren't the most powerful cooling method, but still have some uses. It is possible to put some in base areas to keep them cool, but beware doing this in a spaced out DLC due to their radiation output. Similarly, they can be used to keep farms cool and stop other plants overheating. Again, note that doing this in a spaced out DLC will add radiation to the farms and can make mutant seeds too. And it is still possible to use them with industrial machinery and even better in a hydrogen atmosphere. Other than cooling, weaseworts also have another uncommon use as a gas pump. Because they take in gas on their bottom tile, and output it on their top one, you can make a gas pump if left in a one tile wide area. That's all of the uses for weaseworts in the base game, but as mentioned, in the spaced out DLC, they also produce quite a good amount of radiation. On the tiles either side, they produce almost 400 rads per cycle, and can be used to generate rad bolts especially early on for material science research. This layout is very effective for maximising rad bolts, 
and with only 5 plants is making around 1,700 rads per cycle. I covered radbots in more detail in their own tutorial bite, so see that for more information. And as with all radiation sources, they're very useful for killing germs, so can easily disinfect food poisoning or slime lung if placed suitably. But that's it for this guide to weaselworts. I hope this helps you get the most out of these useful plants, and thanks for watching.